Hi, this is Kendrick with worldmedicalschool.org. We're going to talk about antipsychotics. If you are surprised that we're doing a whole uh, video on drugs, then don't be because we're going to do a lot more. So antipsychotics are used classically for schizophrenia, but also for schizoaffective disorder, for bipolar, especially in manic episodes. has been used for OCD and severe depression. And some psychiatrists kind of just like to sprinkle them in for just about any psychiatric diagnosis. The main mechanism with typical antipsychotics is to block the D2 receptor. Um, atypicals will throw in some 5-HT receptor blockage as well, along with some other things. So the different classifications include the typicals, which are kind of the older ones, and the atypicals. There's not a lot of uh, real meaningful difference between these in terms of what they do, but there's there's kind of a a rough difference in their indications and their side effects. So the typicals, the first ones, including haloperidol, uh, clo uh, chlor chlor chlorpromazine, which is uh, thorazine, and flufenazine, those are kind of the big ones that, that you hear about. The main side effects are the extrapyramidal side effects, which we'll talk more about the hyperprolactinemia and anticholinergic effects and neuroleptic mal malignant syndrome. Now all uh, antipsychotics share these symptoms to some extent but the uh, typicals are, are much more pronounced for for the EPS and especially the hyperprolactinemia. Atypicals are more associated with weight gain, type 2 diabetes, sedation, and in some cases, a granulocytosis. And again, all of them share the side effects, but uh, but the ones that are especially shared are the anticholinergics, orthostatic hypotension, and sedation. But again, sedation more in the atypicals. So among the typicals, haloperidol is the, the classic antipsychotic and it's, uh, it's used in both acute and chronic psychosis, but it's one of the few that's used in acute psychosis. It's not very sedating, and it's real inexpensive these days. And uh, so the main side effects with all, all typicals are really the, the EPS and the hyperprolactinemia and uh, the others that we talked about on this last slide with uh, anticholinergic and neuroleptic malignant uh, symptoms. So we've used this slide before when we, when we were talking about schizophrenia, but I didn't really do it much justice then. The major uh, EPS or extrapyramidal symptoms are dystonia, akathisia, and Parkinson's are the acute symptoms, and tardive dyskinesia is kind of the long-term uh, symptoms. I put tardive dyskinesia off to the side here because uh, it is a, a much longer-term symptom, and it doesn't really have any treatments, whereas these other three, we can, we can treat the symptoms of the drugs with more drugs. So they're put in this order for a reason, Dystonia comes first uh, within a day or so. You can see some dystonia. Akathisia shows up within a couple days. Parkinson's can be a few days to a month where you start to see these side effects. And we can treat the side effects. Uh, the dystonia we can treat with anticholinergics like benztropine, diphenhydramine. And uh, akathisia we can treat with beta blockers, uh, anticholinergics, and benzos. And the anti-Parkinson's, uh, or the Parkinson symptoms, we can treat with anti-Parkinson's drugs, uh, including levodopa, carbidopa. So this is maybe a good time to take a time out and talk about how, about why we have these side effects. So the basic... Uh, 
philosophy behind uh, antipsychotics is that too much dopamine leads to psychosis, whereas too little leads to Parkinson's. So when we over-treat psychosis, we get Parkinson's, and when we over-treat Parkinson's, we can get psychosis. On to the atypicals. Uh, clozapine was was the beginning of the atypical age. We've had it around for a while now. And it is actually the most effective of all of the antipsychotics. So it can be used in cases that are refractory to other antipsychotics. And on that note, there has not been a real uh, difference shown in studies between among all the rest of the antipsychotics in, term, in terms of effectiveness. There has been suggestion, though, that the atypicals do treat the negative symptoms better than the than the typicals ever did. But other than that, really, there's a, there's no big difference in the effectiveness of antipsychotics, with the exception of clozapine. The big problem with the clozapine is a granulocytosis. That's the one thing that you you won't you shouldn't forget about uh, antipsychotic side effects is that agranulocytosis associated with clozapine. It can happen with, uh, with I think, basically any of these others, but uh, it happens enough more with the clozapine that we have to monitor it weekly. So you get weekly CBCs for six months, and then you can start doing uh, CBCs, I think, monthly after that. But you have to be really careful with this. So on... On that note, you don't want to be giving it to somebody with uh, really poor access to health care, poor fo- follow-up options. Olanzapine, or Zyprexa, is again one of the few that we use acutely, and it's really the first line for acute psychosis. It's uh, better than ha- uh, Haldol in terms of symptoms and uh but it does have the potential for a lot of weight gain, and it can cause seizures. So that's uh, something that you should remember is, is the seizure, especially with this one. So don't give your Zyprexa to um, your olanzapine to epileptics. Risperidone is, uh, right after Zyprexa, it's the most uh, often prescribed for acute psychosis. It generally doesn't have much, as much problems with uh, EPS symptoms until you get over 8 milligrams. Ketiapine or Seroquel is used most often in Parkinson's. This is because it actually doesn't affect the D2 receptors. And it's the uh, among the only one that ones that don't have much D2 effect. Although uh, basically, all the atypicals have less D2 effect than the typicals do. Causes somnolence and, and sedation, which is kind of what I'm feeling right now. Then there's aripiprazole, which uh, is also used for depression, um, but you don't want to use it in adults with dementia. It doesn't cause much weight gain. Um, and zeprazidone really is the one that doesn't cause uh, weight gain. So that one's probably going to be the answer to a question if if they're asking about a weight-neutral uh, antipsychotic. So in summary, I've got a few questions here. I'm going to try this, try and do this a little bit more than I have been. So what's the class associated with the most weight gain, atypicals or typicals? That's going to be the atypicals. What's the uh, inexpensive drug used for acute psychosis? Uh, That's going to be haloperidol. Which one are we going to use in Parkinson's disease? It's going to be your Seroquel. Which one do we also use for depression? Abilify, aripiprazole. Got to monitor this one weekly. Clozapine, Clozaril, 
Remember, that's for agranulocytosis. Which one's weight neutral? Zaprazidone, geodone. So if, if this is going to be the answer to a question or if you need to use this in practice, you're going to think about the, just your overweight patient. You start thinking about geodone. First line for acute psychosis, olanzapine or zyprexa. Cardiac arrhythmias, ziprazidone, or geodon. And then uh, the ones that I should have put on here probably are um, the contraindicated in adults with dementia. Uh, remember your aripiprazole on that one. And uh, potential seizures, seizures, remember olanzapine. All right, well, thank you for uh, tuning in. Please leave a comment below to let us know what we can do better. And if you'd like to help out, uh, email me at volunteer at worldmedicalschool.org. Thanks.